just like in our modern times, people throughout history have shown pride in their cities through spectacular buildings and architecture. In the Middle Ages, the city of Florence was one of the strongest financial centers of Europe, specializing in the trade of wool and other textiles. In 1296, Florence began a project that they hoped would bring much pride and recognition to their beautiful city. It would be a cathedral that would be among the greatest buildings in the world and would feature a gigantic dome. Over the next hundred years, the colossal building began to take shape. There was only one big problem, and at the center of the cathedral, there was a giant empty hole where the dome would someday rest. They could not start on the dome because no one knew how to build such a massive structure. This would require a highly sophisticated level of engineering that had not even been invented yet. So there it stood open to the rain and cold, waiting for the right person to lead the way. Hello, my name is Lauren Grace with the Rainforest Art Project, and this is the story of an extraordinary man who earned his place in history as one of the fathers of the Renaissance and the first modern architect. Indeed, there may be no better example in all of history for the virtues of hard work and being prepared than Filippo Brunelleschi. For nearly 500 years, the Roman Empire expanded throughout Europe, North Africa, much of Asia and England. It was the greatest empire that the world had ever seen, but by the end of the 5th century, all of its legendary power had been lost. And with its defeat, Europe slipped into an era of cultural stagnation, referred to as the Dark Ages. After 600 years of gloom, many artists and intellectuals of the 14th century began to look back with admiration and envy at the glorious artistic and architectural accomplishments of the early Greeks and Romans. This led them to wonder why they could not create things as great or even greater than had ever been done before. Attitudes were changing and Filippo Brunelleschi, who received his early training as a goldsmith, was ready to demonstrate his innovative ideas in sculpture. Finally, there came a golden opportunity when the Guild of Wool Merchants sent an invitation to seven of the city's greatest artists and announced that they would give 1,000 florins, a fortune at the time, to the one who could create the most beautiful doors for the ancient baptistry building in Florence. Each of the seven artists was provided with enough precious bronze to create one panel and the guild would award the commission of the baptistry doors to the one that they felt was the best. Two of the panels were outstanding among the seven, Filippo Brunelleschi and his rival goldsmith Lorenzo Gilberti had created the most exquisite of the panels, but the guild preferred the work of Gilberti. Brunelleschi was devastated by their preference for the work of his rival and left Florence for Rome to study the art and architecture of the ancient Roman and Greek masters. Filippo Brunelleschi was in deep despair and began working tirelessly so that he would be prepared for the next great opportunity to demonstrate his exceptional skills. Ten years later, he returned to Florence when the Guild announced that they were going to have a competition to see if there was anyone who could design and build the giant dome for the unfinished cathedral. They knew that Brunelleschi had not only studied historic architecture, but had been working on innovative ideas for construction that went far beyond the skills of the ancients. This time, the Guild knew that if anyone could build the Great Dome, it would be Filippo Brunelleschi. It would be the largest masonry or brick dome in the world, measuring over 150 feet across and 180 feet tall, and would need to be built without the usual underlying wood support or scaffolding, as all the domes had been previously done. There was simply not enough timber in the entire Tuscany region to support the enormous dome. Brunelleschi had also decided that he did not want to employ the flying buttresses which had been developed during the Gothic era. 
to support the exterior walls and prevent them from being pushed out and collapsing under the massive weight of the structure. He began work on the dome in 1420 using specialty hoisting machines that he had invented for the task of raising the heavy stones that formed the corners of the octagonal structure. The bricks were laid in a herringbone pattern which gave greater stability and strength as the dome moved upward and inward. There were two other major innovations which enabled the dome to begin soaring over the Florence skyline. They devised a unique double wall construction which actually reduced the weight while adding to the strength. Next, they wrapped the walls with wooden and stone chains which acted to bind the dome together like barrel hoops. These remarkable inventions eliminated the need for the bulky flying buttresses and gave the sense of effortless beauty as if the dome actually belonged in the heavens. In 1436, the entire city of Florence celebrated the completion of the magnificent dome, which even to this day is considered one of the greatest engineering marvels of all time, and nearly 600 years later remains the largest masonry dome in the world. Although its official name is Santa Maria del Fiore, the great cathedral is more commonly referred to by the proud citizens of Florence as El Duomo, or Brunelleschi's Dome. Interestingly, his old rival Lorenzo Gilberti ended up working for Brunelleschi in the beginning of the construction of the dome, but he quickly realized that architecture on this gigantic scale required a unique brand of genius that he did not possess, so he resigned his position. Gilberti did go on to achieve legendary renown as 100 years later the great Michelangelo referred to his work on the baptistry as the most beautiful doors in the world, calling them the gates of paradise. Among Brunelleschi's numerous and stunning accomplishments is the reinvention of linear perspective. This realistic way of seeing the world was popular in lifelike sculpture and paintings of the Greek and Roman times, but had been lost for nearly 1,000 years. While the art of the Dark Ages took on a bulky, rigid and unrealistic appearance, it was Brunelleschi who reinvented and sophisticated this critical technique that was immediately adopted by the Renaissance artists and remains fundamental to all art studies. The rivalry and competition between Brunelleschi and Gilberti is legendary, inspiring the birth of the Renaissance and an unprecedented era of excellence in art and architecture that remains with us even to this day. With the completion of the dome, Brunelleschi established himself as one of the greatest creative geniuses of all time. But as we learn about his great personal struggles to overcome crushing defeat, the dome begins to symbolize something much more meaningful than building and architecture. The great dome of Santa Maria del Fiore can act as a beacon, lighting the way to a better future through hard work and being prepared for the next great opportunity in our lives. This is Lauren Gray signing off with the Rainforest Art Project, changing the world one piece of art at a time.